Let's look at Prolog. So Prolog is a declarative logic language, which means that you give it rules and facts and then a query, and it will try and do logical deductions on the using the rules and facts you gave it to answer your query, and it will either succeed or it'll fail. So that's a little bit different than a normal programming language where you declare exactly the steps you want to take and it will follow those steps you told it to take. So let's look at this example. So in this example, this is defining a predicate connected on a directed graph and connected will be true and be um, succeed as a query if A is connected to B. So let's do a little example here. So here's X, Y, Z, and W. And we'll have edges going down here, here, and from Z to W. So here's our little directed graph. And we'll write this with some facts. Edge from X to Y. There's an edge from X to Z. There's an edge from Y to W. And there's an edge from Z to W. So here are here's our little group of facts that define our graph. And now we might have a query like connected X to W question. So this will be our query. And once we give this query, Prolog will look at this definition of connectedness we gave it, and it will try and derive connected X W. And it will actually succeed. So there's a path here from X to W. And so it'll reply success. And you can, you can work out the details like of how these rules connect and give you X to W. And it's a nice little program. So let's look at a more complicated case now. So here's a program that defines the append operator. And so append of x, y, z will be true if z is the result of appending x and y. And so x and y are lists. So here's an example. So append list a comma b with c comma d. So we can do this query here. We'll say appending a comma b with c comma d is what? And Prolog will think a little bit and then reply success with r equals a, b, c, d. If you look at the rules, this should start to make sense. You see, okay, well, it's recursion on the first part, really. So there's a base case here. So here's the base case. And you know, the, this is, these are the two inputs. Here's the output. Here's how you handle the base case. You know, appending the empty list to a list is just that list. And then here is, if you have an element and a list, then if x plus y got you z, then adding one more element to the beginning of x gives you that element added on to the beginning of the result of appending x and y together. So here's the recursive case. So that starts to make sense. But then the interesting thing about logic languages is that you can do things like this. So now we're asking appending R plus CD equals ABCD. How do you make that happen? And Prolog will think and it will say, ah, oh, yes, that also succeeds. That will succeed with R equals AB. So what's going on? Prolog is actually using your rules 
So the rules here didn't talk about which way things are going. They're just logical statements. And by asking a query about what appending what to CD gives you A, B, C, D, it could figure out that you have to append A, B to CD to give you A, B, C, D. So it's kind of using the rules in a, the reverse order than you maybe expected them. So that's a, a cool feature of logic languages is you can use, you can write things that look kind of like recursive definitions and if you use them forward, they're kind of normally recursive. And you can also use them backwards. So that's pretty amazing.